up here. Run. Martin O'Miles. One more time. All right, we need to get a couple of things clear, okay? <laughs> the degree to which he hates reading bios is the degree to which I hate writing and submitting them. So when they asked for it, if you ask Crystal, I didn't actually submit one, which means she went to somebody else. They found something somewhere. Somebody wrote, and it did not start with anything about when I was born. Okay, so today what I'd like to talk about, if you're cool with it, is how to create a business that makes your clients happy every single time. Are you interested? Yes. Okay, good, because if not, I was like, well, I'll sit down, because, you know, it's, east, you know, it's early in the morning for me. Um, what I also want to do is I want to contrast that with how do we do it without stumbling through the strategies and the tactics and the tech, because sometimes they can get overwhelming. So real quick, I'm going to do a mercifully short introduction, as in it's not even going to come up. Is there a place I'm supposed to... All right, so here's the mercifully short introduction. My name is Brad Martineau. Uh, there we go, CEO of Six Division. If you want to email me, you can email me. If you want to hit me up on the socials, feel free to hit me up on the socials. Uh, I help entrepreneurs create businesses that make happy clients every time. That's what we do, so real simple. Uh, outside of business, uh, this is what I go back home to, and I'll give you all the jokes that I get when we start. Yes, there are five of them. Yes, they're all mine. Yes, we're still happily married. Yes, I know how it works. Okay, we checked all those off. Um, <laughs> The other reason why I show this picture is Chris Rock has a joke. He says, when you go on a date with someone for the first time, you don't go on a date with that person, you go on a date with that person's representative, okay, which is, let it sink in. Maybe that doesn't make, maybe it's not funny up here. And, okay, so it's funny, but it's also true. Now, anybody in here have four or five kids? Raise your hand. Okay, so you all know that this picture is a big fat lie, right? Like bull crap, there's no way. That is not representative of what it's like. So this is what it's actually like to have five kids and family pictures, but this is what it's really like <laughs> to have five kids and family pictures. Okay, now the reason why I show this is because when we show up at events, here's what we tend to do. We come in as an audience member, we bring our representative, and we posture, and then as a speaker, I'm supposed to get up and tell you that everything's great and it always has been fine and it's amazing and I'm this fantastically perfect person. And what happens is that representative that we bring blocks us from all possibility of learning. So my invitation for you, and I'm gonna do the same thing, is take off your representative, fold it up, stick it in your purse, stick it in your notebook, and for the next 20 minutes, let's have a non-representative-based interaction. Who will join me with that? Okay, beautiful. All right, so how to create a business that makes your clients happy every single time without stumbling through the, strategy, the, tech, the, the, the strategies, the tactics, and uh, the tech. So look, because here's the deal. Our businesses exist to create happy clients. And I know when we get together, what we like to do is we talk about our revenue that we made and we talk about how big our team is. But at the end of the day, what it's really about is that we actually create clients to be happy, right? So you want to know what will take the wind out of your sails faster than anything in the world? At least this is true for me. Having clients and not being able to make them happy. Who relates to that? Right? So here's what, tell me if this sounds familiar. So we, you're like super excited in your business. You got this vision. Maybe you just closed a couple of big deals. Uh, maybe you went to an event and crushed it or a campaign crushed it. Super excited. Log into your email and boom, you got a client problem. Wind gone. Sales deflated. You know what I'm talking about? And then it happens again. And if it happens too many times, what happens is you start to look at your email and it's a little bit like playing Russian roulette. Like, I don't know that I actually want to go in and check that out. And then what we haven't even gotten to are the leads and the prospects that are slipping through the cracks of our business because we're over here trying to take care of our clients. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. And eventually it can kind of start to feel a little bit like this. We're like, holy crap, how do I handle all this stuff? And then we haven't even gotten to all the ideas. We come to events, we go to masterminds, we have business coaches, and we got all these ideas of things that we're supposed to do. We haven't even got to those yet. Right? So tell me if this sounds familiar. Uh, you're supposed to have a lead magnet. Anyone ever heard that before? You should have a tripwire. How about, oh, you know what? We should have some webinars running, maybe a funnel. We should definitely automate all that stuff. We should do a survey in that thing. Don't forget to use video because video crushes. Online course if you want to scale your impact. Then roll them into a membership. And then on the back of the membership, make sure you run Facebook. And then definitely got to do content. You got to be all over the socials. Don't miss LinkedIn because LinkedIn is it right now. <laughs> Don't forget the long-term strategy of SEO. Make sure that you write a book to establish your authority and then make sure you have a great experience. <laughs> so we're like, cool, I'm gonna go do all of that, which by the way, none of these are bad ideas. We're like, holy crap, what do I do? So what we do is we gotta go get software to make it easy, right? So we go out and there's only like 4 million different software tools that we're gonna use to make our life insanely easy. I think it's like Friday at noon Eastern, a new one comes out that's gonna revolutionize our life and change it, right? <laughs> So we got all the software tools, and then we're like, well, crap, I don't actually know how to do all that, so we gotta go get people to help us. So we get copywriters, and then we gotta get our web designers and our web developers and our print designers, right? Sound familiar? So here's the question. Tell me if this feels familiar. 
Okay, so, so here's the deal. We get overwhelmed because we've got all this stuff going on. Well, guess what happens with overwhelm when you can't check it? It turns into frustration. Frustration, if you can't check it, guess what that turns into? It turns into this. <laughs> Who's been there? All right, so if you're okay with it, I'm going to read you something out of my journal. Okay, so this is where we ditch representatives. Uh, so I got there one time, and here's what it sounded like. So this is unedited raw from my journal. So the last couple of months, and in particular this last week, have been really interesting. In short, I've had serious doubts about whether I provide any real value in the world. I've doubted my ability to lead Sixth Division. I've doubted my ability to lead in my marriage to Bridget. I've doubted my ability to raise my children. Also, for whoever might read this, me included, this is not a false humility sort of admission where I'm pandering for sympathy. I don't play that game. This was honest, genuine. I want to scream and run away and give up feelings and emotion. I attempted to do a lot of self-work, and even then I doubted my own conclusions. Anyway, the point is a lot of doubt, a lot of fear, a lot of paralysis, a lot of wanting to give up and go back to easier days. Here's the worst part. I knew it wasn't true, but I couldn't do anything about it. It reminded me of another story I had. Anyway, so I'm going to skip ahead. This is one of those experiences. I consciously understood what to do, but I couldn't get my mind and body to respond. I think I got a taste of what hopelessness actually feels like. I don't like it at all. Anyway, all that backstory leading up to this. This morning, I dropped the three boys off at school. I felt okay last night going to bed, although if I'm being honest, I could feel the fingers of doubt and fear lingering just outside my consciousness. Anyone know what I'm talking about? This morning felt about the same. Then I got in the car to take the boys to school and the feeling started to come again. I dropped them off and as I was driving to work, the doubt and fear came full force, which basically means I found myself in a state of, I have all of these responsibilities and things that I've got to do and I can't actually do them and I have no idea what to do. Anyway, I pulled up to the office and I literally wanted to cry, scream, run, go home and sleep, basically anything except going to the office. You ever been there before? Yeah. Let me tell you why this doesn't work, okay? Let me tell you what the problem is with this. I believe, I created this thing I call the small business stack. I believe every conversation, idea, thought, problem in business can be broken down into one of these four layers. At the foundation is you as the entrepreneur and the leader of your organization. Out of you, you have to draw your vision, get it clear, and be able to communicate it. On top of that, you can build and stack a team. Up here, we can go get clients, right? Guess what? This one's really, really important. That's why we're going to talk about it. It's the only one that actually makes you money. But what's the foundation? You. When you're like this and when we're like this, guess what suffers? The vision, our team, and our clients. And if only that was it, but if we keep drawing this over, guess what sits over here? I don't know, this thing called like a family stack or everything else that you go do in the world. So we've got to figure out how to beat this and be able to go move our business forward to create the impact that we were meant to have. So that's what I want to talk about uh, for the next little time that I have. All right, so here's the answer. I'm just going to give it to you up front. It's called an automatic client journey. That'd be a really good term for you to write down, know, and start to use inside your business. What you want to build is an automatic client journey. I believe language is important, so let me just describe what I mean by this. Client journey. We're talking about all of the steps that it takes for you to get leads and turn them into clients, okay? There's a lot of them. There's a lot of different moving pieces. Now, one really simple tool for you to have to organize this is there's actually two different things happening here, and most people get stuck because they don't recognize that they're different. The first thing over here are called eyeball efforts. All the things you do to get in front of people's eyeballs. They are not part of the client journey. They are part of the client experience, but not the client journey. Separating that will make a massive difference in your life. The second piece is the client journey itself. It starts when you capture the lead, and it ends when they say, don't talk to me anymore, or they've continued to pay you all the money that they have, and they love you, okay? That's the client journey. Think of it this way. Client journey is the car, eyeball efforts are the gas. What we're talking about today is the car. Emily just got up and talked about the gas. That's one form of the gas is Facebook ads. I want to talk about the car because it has everything to do with what you get back as a return on your eyeball efforts. That's the client journey side. Now, automatic. This is really, really important. I said automatic, not automated. We're not trying to build an automated business. That's the biggest lie that's ever been sold to entrepreneurs that you're going to build an automated business. There are lots of things in your business that fundamentally cannot be automated, but we can use automation to make it automatic. It's a difference. Automatic is the outcome. Automation is the tool. You guys tracking with me? So a really good analogy as we start to think about your client journey to make it automatic is think factories. Here's why. Factories take an input. They produce an output. And if you walk into a factory, you will see humans and machines working together to take the input and make the output. And the best part of the analogy is if you were to walk into the very first factory that was ever created, guess what you would see? People and they could make an automatic factory using just people. 
You do not have to have a bunch of crazy, fancy technology and software to leverage this to make an automatic client journey. And then what you do is you introduce technology only to the extent that it does what? Makes the people more effective and more efficient. So I'm going to be thinking factories, okay? So automatic client journey, and we're going to talk about uh, the details. Here's why. I love this quote by Walt Disney. It captures everything that I believe in business. Do what you do so well that they're going to want to come again and bring their friends. So think of your experience like, I want to create this really, really amazing roller coaster. You guys ever been on a really amazing roller coaster ride? When you get off, what do you want to do? I don't know. Anybody want that to happen with their clients? And then when you come home from that vacation and people are like, hey, how was your vacation? What do you talk about? The really amazing ride you went on, not the like subpar restaurant that you went to. Anybody want their clients to talk about the amazing experience that they had? Yeah, that's what we're going for. The problem is most of us have something like this. <laughs> Some of us have something like this, so we've got to figure out how to create this. Okay, so there are three phases that you will go through. There is no, you cannot avoid these phases. They're going to go through these phases. I want to give you some tips to navigate them uh, better, we'll say. First phase is you have to get organized. Like, you have to figure out how to organize all that crap that's coming at you. So the challenge that's in the way here, for each one of these, I'll tell you what's in the way. The challenge that's in the way of the get organized phase is this thing I like to call the purse. Now, ladies, I apologize in advance. Purses are phenomenal. They can carry lots of stuff. They also are the most insanely frustrating thing ever created on the planet. <laughs> they have what you need. It's got a rabbit and the kitchen sink in this purse. But trying to find it just doesn't work out very well. So remember this. Here's what we do. We take all of our ideas. We take all the software, we take all the vendors, and you know what we do? We put them into our small business purse. It's what produces this. It's what produces this frustration, the same frustration every time. It's like, hey, babe, where are the keys? They're in my purse. Never mind, I don't need the car. <laughs> I'll walk. It's not that big of a deal. So here's the answer, right? What we've got to do, this formula is we've got to organize thinking. We'll unlock and allow you to combine disciplined execution. That is the way that you get to disciplined results. The key, though, is we have to start with organized thinking. Okay? So let's just break down what's actually happening in your business. Your business exists to make money and make an impact, yes? I can guarantee you that you will never make a dollar, nor will you ever make an ounce of impact that is not done through one of the things that people can buy from you. So your business is nothing more than the list of things that I can come to you and I can buy to get. It's your products and it's your services. Got it? Okay, it'll seem simple, but it's significant. Your entire business is nothing more than what I can buy from you. Each one of the things that I can buy from you has a client journey. Whether, you are in, like, whether you're intentionally designing it or not, it has one. And then each one of those has eyeball efforts, every single one of them. Your business is nothing more than what I can buy from you. Every single thing I can buy from you has a client journey. Everything, every client journey has eyeball efforts to fill it. You want to say, I got a target to make a million dollars, five million dollars? Guess what you got to do? Well, what are you going to sell to make that happen? What's the journey that's going to get people to buy it and be happy? And then what are the eyeball efforts? How do I get enough people in so they go through the journey so I can sell what I want, create the impact that I want? Now, when we dive into this box, it's a little bit misleading, okay? This box actually has some moving pieces. So inside here, we've got eyeball efforts. That produces some leads. Leads turn into prospects. Prospects turn into clients. Now, we don't convert all of our leads and prospects. And then some of our clients are done, so they drop down onto these lists. What you're looking at here, inside the client journey, there's only four types of factories that exist in your business. This is what they are. You have a client factory, a prospect factory, a lead factory, and list factories. Every idea you ever have will fit into one of these buckets. It'll either be to add one of these factories to your business, shut one down, or change the way that one of them works. That's it. That's the only thing that you're ever doing when you get ideas. Okay, now, you might have multiple lead factories in a client journey. You might have multiple prospect factories. It might get super complex like this. Point is, is there's only four types of factories that exist in your business and inside the client journey. Here's the challenge a lot of people have. I love this quote. So this was a guy that commented on Facebook. He's like, yeah, I've got a couple of moving pieces you mentioned. Articles, online course, webinar. Uh, but they seem to be just floating around in space and not tethered, tethered to any kind of system or flow, which would be ideal. Anybody relate to that? It's like, I got things working. They're just not working together, right? So this experience we have, like, it doesn't work very well. It's not connected. We got to make everything work together. So when we work with our clients, we, go, we do this thing. We call it a client journey game plan. You can call yours whatever you want, but it's a client journey game plan where the first thing we do is we organize all the different factories in our client journey so that they're working together. So you got to get that developed in your company that you have the ability to do that. So after we do that, now we got to go look at the factory itself and make sense of all the moving pieces inside the factory. So we'll look at our client factory, our prospect factory, our lead factory, and our list factory, and we got to get all the details organized. But there's two layers of organization here. First is organize what are the factories, how do they work together. Second is what are the details of each 
of the individual factories. We do this, it's called an executable blueprint. It basically tells thing, what's supposed to happen once you get inside of a factory. Okay, so the tools, again, this is a recap. You got a client journey game plan, organize all the factories to work together, and then you got an executable blueprint, which is organizing the details of the individual factory. Now, here's the deal. You want this to be in a system, and here's why. When we go to get organized, you gotta have the tools to make this happen, but systems are better than superstars. You wanna have a system that the business owns, not a guy that knows how to do this or a girl that knows how to do this. You wanna know why? You wanna know why systems are better than superstars? Superstars leave. And I hate to do it. I hate to do it, but you know it's coming. Okay, so in your business, what you gotta be focused on is you gotta have a system that you can plug people into that organizes the ideas first into factories and then the details inside the factory. If you can't master that skill set, you will never have a client journey that will systematically produce happy clients. It's impossible, it'll be hit or miss all the time. All right, uh, phase two, you've gotta get a foundation. Now this is where like as entrepreneurs, we're notoriously bad at this because we wanna pretend like we're way better than we are. So here's what we do. What we're fighting here is this thing called the sand. You guys ever run on the sand before? <laughs> Yeah, there's only one way to describe it. It sucks, okay, that's it. Anytime I'm walking or running on sand, I'm like, where is the concrete? Can I please get to some concrete, okay? And the other thing is like, if we build any structure of any value, what do you do first? You build the foundation, right? So like, there's even a story about it in the Bible. Stupid guy built his house on the sand. Smart guy built his house on the rock. Storm came, stupid guy was sad. Smart guy was happy, right? Okay, pretty simple. So here's what we do. When we look at this, like, look, you might have a bunch of things, you might have one thing that you sell in your business. You might have inside your client journey a really simple one, it might be super complex, right? Here's the point, when we got all this stuff going, it's like, well, where do I start if I wanna get a foundation? Well, we're gonna look over here, the first key is start simple, you can get fancy later, and you only do it if necessary, so we're thinking like tip of the iceberg, but I'm talking like tip of the tip of the iceberg, okay? So what we do is we look at the things that you sell, and you pick the one that's most important. That if you got it dialed in, it would have the biggest impact in your business. Most likely, it's going to be the thing you sell the most of, or it's going to be the thing that you want to sell the most of. Then you go dive into here, and you start at the end. Don't start at the beginning. So you start at the end, and you get your happy client factory dialed in. Then you get your prospect factory dialed in. Then you get your lead factory dialed in. Then you get your list organized, and boom, now you have a foundation. Now, for each factory, this is what we're trying to do. One, we want to get organized so that we can seal the cracks and stop losing leads and stop losing clients. Okay, remember this? We're gonna tighten it back up. We like want people to enjoy the ride. Second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and systematically upgrade the experiences. Once you get organized, it will become insanely obvious where your experiences are subpar. And then you can go upgrade them. Like, it, you don't even have to do anything. It's just like, oh crap, I should go do something about that. Okay, and here's the deal. Value versus experience. This is a really important distinction to make. Value is when you deliver the thing that they bought. Experience is how you deliver it and how you make them feel as they consume it. If you have somebody who's amazing at what they do and they deliver a subpar value, do you think that they will win or lose to somebody who is pretty good at what they do but has an amazing experience? Lose is the answer. This person will win every single time. All right, third thing we wanna do for each factory is eliminate the shadows. You know what shadows are? They're things that you can't see inside shadows. And most entrepreneurs run their business and they don't have real clarity and visibility into what's going on. So what we do is as we're going through each factory, we identify what reports do I need that will help me make important decisions about this factory so that we have something that will actually help us drive our business. So we eliminate the shadows, and then we're looking at how can we make this easier for me and for my team. And this is where we start to consider software. This is where we start to consider tools to make sure that it actually makes our life easier. So this is the middle phase is get a foundation. How about we do this? You guys are taking a bunch of pictures, and I know what's gonna happen. You'll never look at them again. So <laughs> let's do this. In a second, I'm gonna pull up a slide, maybe a minute and 15 seconds. I'll pull up a slide that has a little text number you can text in, and if you're really nice and say amazing things about me, I'll give you a copy of the slide. Sound good? Okay, cool. All right, so what this does is it tees us up to be able to get better. Now, I don't know what get better means for you, right? Maybe you started with the first product or service and you're like, oh, I'll just go look at the other ones. That could be what you do next. Maybe you're in here and you're like, oh, I got my foundation dialed in, but actually I've got these other factories inside this client journey. Maybe you go look at those. I don't know what it's gonna be in your business, but now you're in a position to be able to go actually do something about your client journey, so we get to go get better. Now, here are the things that people say that cause them to stop. You gotta be aware that your brain's gonna tell you all the reasons why you shouldn't do everything I just talked about. Number one, oh, all that organization stuff, that sounds like a lot of work. You know what sounds like a lot of work for me? Running in sand. And running in sand is what you're doing when you're trying to do work and you don't have a framework or a process to do it and you're not organized. So, here's all I know. If we race in getting organized in our client journey, I will win. 
That's it, right? So, it's not, so don't, don't fall victim to this lie. We got to have the system in our business to help us organize the factories and then organize the details. Second thing is don't be so full of yourself, like myself included, I fall into this trap, that you're afraid to step back to step up. You might need to come back and just, you guys ever seen in the Lumberjack, Lumberjack Olympics, they have this thing where you have to, they have to chop in, put a plank in the, in the tree and go up and then cut the top off. Sometimes they get up two planks and they're like, oh crap, I got to go back down. That one's not dialed in right. Don't be afraid to step back to step up. Go look and get your foundation dialed in. Third thing is don't be fooled by success. Just because you have pretty good success doesn't mean that you don't have room to get better. And then the last one is my favorite. Oh, I can't wait until I'm ready for that. As if this is the thing that you earn the right to do after you've built a business. No, when I was in the parking lot and I wanted to go home and I wanted to go to sleep, the thing that got me to where I am now, which is I've got a program we're launching next year that's going to change how entrepreneurs look at their client journey and a software tool that's going to back it up. The thing that got me there was this. I didn't get there and then I started to do this. This was the thing that got me there. And look, here's the deal. So in summary, everything's easy until it's actually time to go do it. <laughs> okay, so I built a business to help entrepreneurs do this. So here's the number. Um, take a picture. Make sure you text into it. Uh, there are a couple of ways I can help you. One, we're going to have a conversation. Come chat. If there's another one that you're like, I really want to go to that one, great. Text in and go to that one. This will kick you a text back that says, hey, let me know what your name is so I don't call you nameless person, right? And then we'll have a little conversation. I also wrote a book that's coming out later this year called Happy Client Factory. So if you want to get like a pre-release version, take, take a look at that. It goes deeper into this stuff. Then you can, we'll text about that. And then also I'd love to have a conversation about how we can help you install the system and get this foundation in place. I'm really, really excited to see what you guys go do to get better, right? We're entrepreneurs and we're archangels. And I looked up archangel before I come up here and I said, it's an angel of high status. You know what angels do? They protect people. Here's what I know. What I know is when you get organized and you have a system in your business to be organized, and then you go get a foundation, it will change you. And when you are changed, the way that you show up in your company and to your team will fundamentally change the way that they show up. And what they're going to do is they're going to go home and it will fundamentally change the way that their children show up in the world. And those children are going to go out in the world and it will fundamentally change the way that their children interact with their friends. And sometime down the road, there is going to be a child born to a friend of one of the kids of somebody that works with or for you that you have the ability to impact when you can create a business that systematically makes happy clients every time and can influence them. So my invitation to you is to step into your power as an entrepreneur, step into your power as an archangel, create the business that creates the happy clients, and create a whole new future for someone that's not even born yet.